How did the original Broadway show change when you started uh, organizing the tour? Like, did they? Did you have to make any changes, or what was your vision of it? Or how did the Broadway show change for the tour yes. show? Yeah, no changes at no all. No changes at all. No, I mean there are small things that happen in the staging, right? Which have to do with you mentioned earlier that someone wanted to know why the slap was taken out. Right. That had to do with the actor. The actor just didn't want to do that slap in that way, and you know I'm, that's part of a rehearsal process, you know, and things come out because of different actors, but. You know, different actors discovered things which now become part of the show and people, you show up in Japan and people are now doing it in Japan. But there, were no con there was no conscious effort to change things in the tour. I think there were a couple of moments that Michael had wanted to revisit okay. in the staging. You know, but they're small moments. And I made changes. I made changes in the show in London. I made some changes that I was n had never been able to make. I don't know how many people know this. And, a couple of those changes have been incorporated into the tour, which were not on Broadway. The song Whispering, which is a big moment for Vendla, I, I wrote a desk cant for Melchior to sing against it, Touch Me, mm -hmm. and um, it's quite beautiful, and we did that for London. And I made a number of small changes in London for the London producers, and some of those have been incorporated into the tour. Now, you won a Grammy Award, and you won a Tony Award. Me? Yes, personally. Me. Yeah, I want to. Yeah, you want to. <laughs> <laughs> you want to. Oh, uh, how did your life change? Um, when you're standing up there, and did you think, did, when you're creating it, that this is the path you'd go down? No. But I, I always had faith in the show, and its power to move people. You know, when we were, we fell apart. You know, nothing happened for three and a half years. It was terrible and dark. And I always, and people ask me, did you lose faith? I never lost faith in the show. I always, or that it would happen, I always believed it would happen and I always believed it would resonate with people, that it would reach people's hearts. I always think that the cry of one heart, the real cry of one heart, if you can bring it forth, will touch the hearts of other people. You know, it's like this young girl who created Mother's Day because she loved her own mother so much. But, um, the, um, so I've always trusted that. I trust that all the time as a writer. However noted, I imagine myself standing on stage. I mean, I had been practicing a speech since I was a young boy. Okay, and, you know, that works. In the like shower. That. Yeah. Not that that was the speech I gave, but you know what I mean, don't you? Yeah, I mean, I think everyone does. <laughs> everyone all... wants to be acknowledged and recognized. So, so, yeah. that, so that, yes, but no, not specifically for Spring Awakening. But I can tell you, um, it's a complete out-of-body experience. I'm sure that's what most people would say. We've won awards, they have a camera on you. Mm -hmm and they announce your name. They announce the show before my name, and so I didn't take it in for a moment, you know, and then it was like I was waiting for my name and they said something else, mm -hmm. even though what they said was Spring Awakening. I didn't really take it in. And my wife screamed. And then I, <laughs> then I was like, oh, okay. And then you kind of left, you go out of body, you go up and I spoke, but it has changed my life. Um, I think I, I believe in some way now that dreams can come true. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah. That I, I have a fundamental shift in my outlook, in a way. And um, I can tell you I had a really um, great moment. after I, So I had this complete out-of-body experience, accepting the award for Best Book of a Musical. And then I was nominated also for Best Score with Duncan. And um, I thought maybe I would just be kept backstage, that's what they had said. Mm -hmm. And then there was a musical number going on from another show, and they said, no, actually we have time to take you back to the audience. So I said, okay. So they walked me out. But then this musical number was going on. So I was standing in the darkened aisle at Radio City with this musical number going on with this Tony in my hand. And I was able to just kind of look out on Radio City when no one saw me. I was in the darkness. And I was able to experience the dream at that moment. You know what wow. I mean? I was able to like take in the eternity of my life at that moment. You know what I mean? That here I was and that this had happened. I moved to New York from Indiana with this dream of Know, making a difference. I made a vow on the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> How does your religion play a part in um, the success of, of Spring Awakening? Well, I think that I, um, I can answer that in so many ways, but I think I transformed something fundamental about my belief about myself. Mm -hmm. And I think my, my fundamental belief about myself was sort of that I was this really talented guy who was never going to be recognized. 
that, you know, maybe I would write things of value and they'd be seen after I died or maybe they wouldn't, but, you know, it would never happen, right. basically. That was, I think, my fun. And I think I changed that fundamental view of myself. And, and that's, it's not like, that sounds new agey, but I, I think that it's, Buddhism is, it's, it's very practical. It's like, in a way, it's like going to the gym for your spiritual life. Okay. And in another way, it's very profound transformation. When you chant, you really transform something fundamental about yourself, which is in a way deeper than your karma. Mm -hmm. And I think I really shifted something, you know, and, and um, I don't know if fortune came to me. Buddhism is all about um, compassion and um, substituting faith for wisdom, you know, and Buddhism doesn't make a distinction between sort of bad and good in that way. I mean, in other words, darkness, darkness is, is part of life. You know, Buddhism talks about fundamental darkness. It's kind of never goes away. You got it's kind of a battle every day between the Buddha and the, the devil in yourself. Right. Right. And um, I think that in a way, the message of Spring Awakening, as um, we changed it of our show, is kind of you know you have to accept that the darkness is part of you, and not be frightened of it, and not try to run away from it, and that you can, even in great sorrow, you can, or from great sorrow, you can create something of great value. You know, Melchior determines to live for the sake of his friends he's left behind. Wow. And that's a profound thing, you know. Let's touch on the movie for a second. Is okay. there going to be, I got a ton of <laughs> messages about this, is there going to be a Spring Awakening movie? There is 100% going to be a Spring Awakening movie. And I'm in the thick of it right now. In fact, when we're done, I have a conference call about it. Um, w yes, yes. Um, it's been frustrating in a lot of ways that it hasn't happened already, but I'm learning that it takes a while. And there were a lot of steps that we've had to go through, but yes, I'm hoping, and we're hoping to shoot it this winter. Wow. I think the soonest it could come out would be, and I'm not trying to disappoint people if this doesn't happen, but the earliest it could come out would be like a year from this Christmas. Okay. Cool. A year from this sort of Thanksgiving to Christmas period. It's fantastic. It's ambitious, but we're, yeah. hoping, we're hoping to shoot it soon. Well, that's great. Um, one more thing. What's next for you? You know, I have so much on my plate. I vacation, really maybe? No, vacation, <laughs> I wish. Yeah, I'm thinking, like, go to a spa for, like, two or three days. But, um, well, I have three movies and five stage musicals right now. And then all that's these it? different songs. Yeah. With, yeah, that's it right now. No TV for the moment. Yeah. <laughs> a bunch of songs. A bunch okay. of songs with different composers. And, but so I do. I have, I have, um, well, I have three movies and five shows. So, you know, two of the, two of the new stage shows are with Duncan. Mm -hmm. You know, one is about, is based on the Hans Christian Andersen fairy tale of the Nightingale. And one is about Nero. Wow. Um, and we're going to launch that in London. Okay. And um, I'm doing a musical with Serge Tankian, The System of a Down. Mm -hmm. We're doing a version of Prometheus Bound, the ancient Greek tragedy. And we're going to do it at um, ART Theater with Harvard in, in Boston, in Cambridge, with Diane Paulus, who directed Hair. She's mm -hmm. directing it. So I have those, and then I have... Should I list all this? No, this is too much. No, here. no, I'm <laughs> interested. I know they will be too. So. Um, I'm doing a new version of Chichi Bang Bang. For Sony. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang Wheel, do that one? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, okay. that one, yeah, yeah. I'm writing a new script and an, a new score. Wow. You know, we're, it's going to incorporate a lot of people's favorite songs from the other score. I'm sure it's going to get a lot of hate mail. No, no, no. But it, it's, um, it's very exciting. I have a new envisioning for Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, so I'm doing it with Barbara Broccoli and Sony uh, Pictures. How long have you been working on it? We've been talking about it for a while, okay. but I just turned in an outline. Um, which I think they're excited about. So, well, I'm writing songs with Burt Backrack. Wow. And so we're going to do a show together. We're doing a musical together, which we're going to develop in L. Which we're developing in L. A. That's a talk about a dream come true. And I sit this close to him, and he sings back these words I've written, and he's Burt Backrack. It's just a congratulations on everything thank you. that you've accomplished and. I know that you're the new voice of this generation. So. Oh. No, absolutely, you are. So, and thank you for taking time uh, to be with us. So I appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you.